Hello everyone, good morning. Picking out the kids' outfits for the day. And I had a funny story for you. So I was putting on my socks and they say, slay. And it made me think about something funny that happened when I went to my high school to be in Little Shop of Horrors. YouTube sensation Miranda Sings joined the cast of Little Shop of Horrors at San Marcos High School on Saturday night. So when I was there, uh, I met all the high school students that were in the show. They were all so sweet. And they kept saying slay. And slay is obviously something that has been around forever because, I mean, I've always heard it in like the drag community, like when I would go see drag shows or like hang out with my gay friends in New York City like a decade ago, they'd be like, oh, slay, slay, whatever. So now high schoolers or Gen Zers or I don't know, maybe just people who are cool and not me say it, but they don't say it like that anymore. Like it used to be like, slay, yes. Like that's how we would say it. And now they just go, oh, slay. Slay. Oh, really? Can I have a picture with you? Cool, Slay. And I was like, well, this is so weird. Do you hear this word that I used like a decade ago at drag shows and now is being used by like younger, the younger generation is just like, it's like saying like, cool, cool, cool. I mean, maybe not every, maybe it's just the high school that I went to with me, that's just how they're using it. But it was just funny to me. I was like, this is so funny. Anyway, today, I don't know if I want to have the kids matching or not because I have this and it's so cute, but I don't have a matching one for Wes. If I don't want to match, we could do that. Or do we want to match for something cute? You'd see, I don't know, they drool and poop on everything like within milliseconds. So it's kind of dumb to like try to make the match, but it's, you know, it is what it is. So there's another thing I wanted to say that made me cringe. And I keep wanting to talk about this and I keep forgetting. And so when I thought of the sleigh thing, it made me think of something else that made me feel old. And I was like, oh, I need to talk about this. Oh my God, we should put them in my merch today. Theater Kid and I Cry A Lot. I wonder if I have multiples of these. I think I do somewhere, but let me just check. Oh, three to six months, this is not gonna fit him. Darn. Well, Maisie can wear that. Okay, so anyway, another thing that happened that made me feel old was when I did a meet and greet. I think I was in Canada or New York, I don't know. I had all the meet and greet pictures. Obviously, we're social distance, I kind of am like photobombing the picture, but I always, in every picture ever of me, basically, I'm like, geez, and I do peace sign. Um, just what I've always kind of done. And so I'm doing this for all the pictures, and people are seeing that I'm doing this and they're doing it too and it's cute and fun, whatever. And then this girl walks up to me. Oh, it's so embarrassing. And she turns to me and I go, do you want me to smell like Miranda or Colleen or like myself? And she said, uh, as yourself. And I was like, okay. And then she goes, oh, can you do that funny millennial peace sign? And I was like, yeah. Not realizing that this is like a millennial, like, chuggy thing to do. Has everyone been taking pictures with me, like, doing the peace sign, like, making fun of me? <laughs> like, is this, like, not something we do anymore in pictures? Because this is just something I've always done, I probably always will do. But she was like, oh my god, can you do that funny, like, millennial peace sign? And I was like, yeah, oh, it's so funny. I wasn't doing it to be funny. I was doing it because that's what I do in pictures. But I guess it's a millennial, like, chuggy thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go take the kids on a walk. Well, I tried to film run videos, but my babies woke up from the nap. My babies woke up from the nap. So now I'm all done filming for now. Maybe I can film more after you go to sleep. Toesies. Corey's holding Maisie right now. I think Maisie Joe. Um, so I need to undo all this so I can kiss you without getting lipstick all over you. That's what I gotta do. You know, they've never seen Miranda. <laughs> I wonder if she'll like it. Hello, <laughs> it's me, Miranda Sings. Not interested? Mm -hmm. Hello? It's more insane. Are you kidding me? I can't even believe you're a freaking baby. Are you smiling about it? What's so funny, baby? Why won't you look at me? Maisie Jones, is there too much to look at in this room? What do you think? Do you like it or is it kind of weird? What the heck? She kind of smiled a little. Okay, let's try Wes and see what Wes thinks. <laughs> Mama is Miranda. Is that kind of weird? Do you like Miranda things? They're like, Mom, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> he kind of likes it, but then he's like, oh, I don't care. Chilling with babies and packages. So he's gonna be excited. Lynn is obsessed with Bluey, the TV show. So I got him some shirts. He's gonna love these. He's really excited about this one. Yeah? I have no idea what I have here. <gasps> Flynn's gonna lose his mind. It's the silkworms. Silkworms. <gasps> Whoa! So those are silkworms big. are so exciting. So we have to get a bunch of stuff for them because like they own they eat like a certain type of leaf. And obviously, I don't want them to stay in that jar. I want them to have more room. So I'm gonna move them into a bigger place. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. They stink. Okay, Flynn just got home from the park. Close my eyes first. Yeah, close your eyes. You're not gonna believe it. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> it 
It's your silkworms. Yeah. Are you so excited? Hey, look at the top. Yeah? All right, I'm gonna call Aunt Jessica because she knows all about silkworms and she can tell us how to take care of them, okay? Mom, look, oh, Mom, look at that big one on the side. Whoa, it's huge. Wesley's favorite thing is if I do this with my hand. You guys, the battle I just had with Wesley was wild. The babies, I've been desperately trying to keep them on the same schedule because it's like every twin mom is like, keep them on the same schedule. And I will say the days where I'm able to have them on the same schedule are great, but those days are not often and they're hard to accomplish because they're two different human beings with two different souls and two different wants and needs. And if you told me, go to sleep, I wouldn't go to sleep. So it's hard to be like, okay, two baby humans go to sleep. I mean, it just, it's rare that it actually happens at the same time. Anyway, this was probably the worst it's ever been. I put them down for a nap and usually one falls asleep before the other, but it's like 10 minutes difference. The issue is normally waking up. Like one of them will wake up after 20 minutes when they're supposed to sleep for an hour and a half and then I have to wake up the other one. Anyway, I just tried to put Wesley to sleep for an hour and 15 minutes. And this second he fell asleep, she woke up. So now they're not on the same schedule, but I'm gonna make some pizza bagels and um, he's just gonna Mama, go. What? We caught him in here, but he's hiding. Who's hiding? The spider. Can I see it? In here somewhere. He's in there somewhere, he's, in there somewhere. he's very weird. Apparently there's a spider hiding in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh. he's hiding, right? <gasps> Mama, I have to help you. Can I eat that cheese first? Sure. Did you wash your hands after touching bugs though? Cause we gotta wash our hands before we make pizza bagels. Oh, that's a pretty good idea. All right, time for pizza bagels. And there's a snail. And mama, careful, a spider too. A spider too. Oh, oh my. Oh my gosh, you gotta be careful. There's a spider in there too. Flynn, you're the cutest person I've ever seen. Mama, I can have that. Oh. I, can, I can have that. Okay, you wanna eat it? We can't eat them or take a bite out of all of them because we're gonna make pizza bagels out of them. Got our little mini bagels. This is my favorite marinara sauce. And this is my favorite mozzarella cheese. But I also have this because we don't have enough of this. And we like pineapples on our pizza bagels in this house. Don't come for me, people who don't like pineapple on pizza. It's delicious. Isn't it delicious? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You wanna do it yourself with the sauce and the cheese and everything on it? I want this one for me. Okay, that one can be for you. All right, so we just spoon on a little bit of this. Mama. What? Don't put that on mine. Okay, I'll just put it on for yours for your dinner over here, but not on that one. The cheese. Mama, can I have me? Yes. I have some cheese for you, one. Oh wait, this is Mexican cheese. I need mozzarella cheese. Put some cheese on there. Ta-da. And like I said, we love pineapples here. So we're putting pineapple on our pizza, Flynn. What do you think of that? Cool. How's your bagel? Is it good? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna even eat dinner because you're eating an entire bagel right now? Mm -hmm. Pop that in the oven for like 10 minutes and we got pizza bagels. Hey everyone, it's a couple days later. I didn't vlog yesterday and today I forgot to vlog too because I'm just crazy like that. My parents came for the day to see the kids. So I was hanging out with them and we're, my mom and I are making deviled eggs. So I hard boiled a bunch of eggs but I got this dinosaur hard boiled egg thingy. <laughs> You wanna see it? Okay, so Grandma Nita got us this for Christmas, so I'm gonna see if it works. You wanna see? Okay, Flynn, let's check and see if it worked. <gasps> what? That's so cool! It's a hard-boiled egg dinosaur. Cool. Is that kinda cool? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna eat it? No, thanks. <laughs> he does not wanna eat it, but it looks cool. I can't believe that works, that's so neat. <laughs> Am I torturing her? Oh, 
She loves it. Okay guys, this is gonna be a quick one tonight. Obviously I didn't film anything else today. All you saw was me making a hard boiled dinosaur egg, but it's just, it was nice to see my family. So I was hanging out with them. I thought I would answer some questions before going to bed really quickly. So here we go. Angela said, I want a play by play account of when Flynn wakes up in the morning and comes running to you. Mama, mama, my foot doesn't hurt today. Okay, so basically she's talking about in my last vlog I posted, I talked at length about how we got a little tiny shard of glass out of Flynn's foot. And he had this piece of glass in his foot for a while. and it was just a very exciting, happy moment when we got it out. Basically, she wants to know what Flynn's reaction was, and it's pretty good, so I do want to tell this story. Flynn woke up, and because of the amount of times we tried to get the glass out, Flynn does now not like tweezers. I also saw a comment that was like, oh, those doc I can't believe those doctors couldn't get that glass out. Like, idiots. Like, you guys could, but the doctors couldn't. You guys, it was not the doctor's fault. It was not easy to get out. It was very, very difficult to get out, especially when he was awake, because Flynn's very very sensitive and emotional and he was freaking out. He was crying a lot and yelling at us and begging us and because he's so sweet and he's good with his words and good at expressing his emotions, he wasn't just like kicking me like, no, no, no. He was going like, please, mommy, are you listening to me? And I go, yes, I'm listening to you. He goes, you're not listening. I'm like, I'm listening. What do you want? He's like, please, mommy, do not take that glass out of my foot. It's hurting me. Like he was like explaining to me that it was hurting him and it was just, it was so sad. But anyway, whenever we would try to get it out, he would thrash around and kick because it hurt. It hurt. There's a piece of glass in his foot, and if you poke at a piece of glass in your foot, like it hurts. They tried so hard. We went to multiple different doctors to try to help us. Like everyone was working hard to try to figure out how to get this glass out of his foot. Everyone really did their best. That's just the only option was to do it while he was sleeping. And I love that there was a lot of comments about that. Like there's a lot of moms in the comments being like, oh yeah, everything. I cut my daughter's bangs while she's sleeping. I get out splinters while she's sleeping. I cut her nails while she I was like, yes, okay. Okay, this is now my new trick. But anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. So Flynn woke up and he's very scared of tweezers now. And so we did use tweezers to get it out. And so he uh, ran up to Eric and he was very excited. And Eric was like, we got the glass out of your foot. And Flynn didn't believe him. Like Flynn woke up and was walking on his toes. And Flynn was like, no, I think I still need to walk on my toes. And Eric was like, no, I promise we got it out. And Flynn was like, how did you get it out? And Eric said, a vacuum. <laughs> I guess he didn't want to say tweezers because every time we'd said tweezers the day before, like Flynn would be like, no tweezers, no tweezers. So he didn't want to say tweezers. So he said vacuum. <laughs> I don't know why, but Eric just told him we used a vacuum to get it out. Flynn was like, oh, vacuum, that's interesting. So then I was talking about it and I was telling him the story and he's really obsessed with this song Wrecking Ball right now by Miley Cyrus. It's his favorite song. And my dad is so sweet. He edited a video for Flynn to watch of literal construction sites where wrecking balls are smashing into buildings to Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball. So Flynn watches that on repeat. He loves it. So Flynn was watching that for the first time that morning that we got the glass out. And I was talking about the experience of getting the glass out. And I said that once we got to the point of like, it was like a little bit out. And when I kind of like kind of touched it with the tweezers, it like just shot out of his foot. Flynn heard that. He heard that it shot out of his foot. But after he took it out, we put a band-aid on his foot. So he woke up and he saw a band-aid on his foot. He heard daddy say he used a vacuum. He heard mama say that it shot out of his foot and he was watching a video about wrecking balls. So later that day, Flynn was telling the story about the glass coming out of his foot. And he said, oh my gosh, the glass came out of my foot. Daddy used a vacuum and then the glass shot through my band-aid in my foot like a wrecking ball. It just shot right through it. So now that is the story he tells everybody. So whenever he sees anybody, he tells them that he had glass in his foot and how it got out is daddy used a vacuum and it shot out of his foot like a wrecking ball and crashed through the band-aid on his foot. That's what he says to everybody. So that was his reaction to it. He's very excited about this. So that was very funny. Anyway, Gamer Gotcha Girl said, Tortilla Talk question, does Wesley laugh and react to Flynn as much as Maisie does? Yes, Maisie and Wesley both are obsessed with Flynn. Maisie's laugh is just so funny to me that I always end up like filming it because Maisie's laugh is like <laughs> like it's like so weird and funny. I love it. And Wes's laugh is so adorable. It's so it's like perfect little cute baby giggles. But for some reason I always pull out the camera when Maisie because Maisie laughs for a long time when she laughs. Whereas Wesley it's more like he laughs kind of all the time, but it's not for long periods of time. Does that make sense? It's so like Wesley is smiling and laughing more often during the day than Maisie. But when Maisie laughs it's for long periods of time. So I'm able to get out the camera and film it and it's funny and silly 
silly, but like Wesley, he'll like laugh a couple times. And by the time I get a camera out, if I think to, he's usually done laughing. But yes, Wesley and Maisie are both so obsessed with Flynn. Like Flynn look, looks at them and they just start laughing. They love him so much. It's so cute. And one more question is from Love. Tortita talk question, who do you look up to the most? Is there any person celebrity that has inspired you a lot? I'd love to know. I'm running out of room on my SD card, so I'm gonna try to answer this very quick. I look up to a lot of people in my family and in my life. Like I look up to people that I know more so than celebrities. I don't like stand many celebrities, you know what I mean? But I'm inspired by certain celebrities. There are certain comedians that really inspire me. I love Meg Stalter. I think she's so freaking funny. Cola Scola, I think is so freaking funny. He's a great comedian. Basically any female comedian I'm very, uh, I'm pretty much a fan of. I'm trying to think of other, those are the first two that popped in my head because I was watching videos of them today. But um, I love awkward humor. I love Christopher Guest and his movies. Just like really dry awkward humor is like kind of my cup of tea. And so yeah, those are the, like the comedians that I like and look up to. But as far as like a person and like a specific person that I look up to, honestly, it is anyone who is really, really passionate and on fire about what they do. Like that's so inspiring to me. So if I talk to like a chef, who is like, uh, like lights up and is so happy and excited to talk about cooking. Or if I talk to someone who makes jewelry and they're so excited and passionate about jewelry or someone who sells crystals and they're so excited and passionate about selling crystals. It does, literally doesn't matter what the job is. Working at any store, anywhere, any doing anything. If someone is like on fire, passionate and just loves what they do and I see that passion in them when they're talking about their career, that honestly is the most inspiring thing to me in the world. That's how I feel about what I do and it makes me want to feel like that about what I do even more. I just love people who are passionate about what they do. I don't know what it is like I love it. So yeah that was the first thing that popped in my mind when you said that like there's obviously specific comedians I like. I'm inspired by their comedy and family and friends. I'm very inspired by them as human beings but um, as far as just like if I meet a person and they are passionate about their job or about something in life. It's just kind of anything in life. I just like passionate people. Like, if you're not passionate about anything I'm kind of just like oh you're a nice person but if you're passionate like very very passionate on fire in love with something. I want to talk to you all day. I like, I love, I just want to hear all about it. Anyway, that's that. I'm going to go to bed and I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Okay, you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home, but now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.